I don't I don't really know how to describe you. <laughs> She's just known as like the hard working, funny, like chill. She's like a big sister to me to be honest. Aww. Yeah. <laughs> so kind. We're young tofu buddies. Yeah. <laughs> Lunchtime buddies, young tofu. <laughs> Hello, I'm from England and I currently work at Ng Teng Fong in Jurong. Hey, I'm Sarah. I'm from Singapore. Um, so we're both radiographers. The main duty of radiographers during this pandemic period would be to do a chest x-ray for the patients who come in, to check for pneumonia and from there you are able to sort of see which are the positive COVID cases. I spent four years in Melbourne, right? When I suddenly came back, I saw all Asians <laughs> and then I bumped into her. I was like, oh! <laughs> Hey! <laughs> so the first thing we'll do is of course to change into our PPE. Then they'll tell us what needs to be done, where we need to like go and cover. Okay, so we're about to start our day. This is the tent just behind us where all the pandemic patients come to be screened. The tent is quite difficult because obviously it's outside. You're in your full PPE and when it's busy, you're literally working non-stop. It's very, very, very hot. It's I, just, I, just, I just tell my colleagues, hey, have you been scuba diving or something? Yeah, <laughs> why are you so sweaty? Yeah. <laughs> Like sometimes we also do get free foods from sponsors. Whenever there's free food, everyone's <laughs> automatically happy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, so that really helps to yeah. lighten the mood of the day and helps to cheer us up. Was there free yong tau fu? <laughs> there's no free yong tau fu, but, but I wish there would yeah. be. Any sponsors will be happy. <laughs> I think radiographers do actually play quite a big part in this pandemic. Often or not, we will see the patient before the doctor does. So we're the ones like taking the x-ray, looking, can we see any, for example, pneumonia or any other pathology? Because we work so closely together all the time, we're just constantly learning things from each other. Aren't we? So she also tries to share with us the different techniques that we can use so that we can better diagnose the patient. So a lot of the patients we come into contact with speak Mandarin, Malay and the dialects. So sometimes yeah. I teach a bit of Chinese and then yeah. Hokkien sometimes as well. You tired Napa? Tahan. Okay, Bolly Napa. My fiance is Malay. I went home one day and told him about the Malay phrases that I'd learned. My fiance was like, what? How, how did you learn that? That's so <laughs> random. I said, oh, my CT scanner says it. <laughs> then now we do a shot. Okay. Like, I'm gonna say <laughs> certain instructions, then you guys have to translate it to the Chinese version and the Malay version. They are phrases that you probably have to say during your normal medical checkups. How do you say sit down in Mandarin? Dua si alai. Dua si alai. Yeah, <laughs> How about um, stand up? Dan si alai. Yeah. Ah, okay. How about in Malay? Badiri. Badiri. Yeah. Badiri. yeah. How do you say are you pregnant in Mandarin? Oh my gosh, I don't know. <laughs> I, you the, may have the chi hui. Da chui hei. <laughs> can la, can. Okay, and a pre segment. I think you guys pass with flying colors. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I feel like we fail quite a lot. <laughs> Especially during this period, a lot of our patients are the patients from the dormitories. Yeah. Some of them are actually very young, so yeah. they don't have their family with them. And that's when, I think it's the scariest Definitely. period of the time. You know, sometimes maybe you can ask them simple questions about whether they've eaten or whether they have water. A patient the other day who started talking to me about cricket and was like, Oh, England cricket, do you watch? Like, I love cricket, I always play cricket. When you start to make conversation, you can see in their eyes, mm -hmm. they kind of like light up that yeah. someone's actually speaking to them and just having a general conversation. Yeah. So I chose to stay in Singapore during the pandemic because my fiance is here. Singapore definitely feels like a second home for sure. It's quite hard to be away from my family. I've been away for like 10 years now but then here I have so many people being nice to me and trying to make me feel at home that it makes it a lot better to actually be here right now. So I thought if I leave I feel like it would be quite bad of me for when a tough time comes to just be like, okay, I'm going home now. It was the right decision for me to stay here. I feel like I've progressed on my time here, so it's now time for me to give back. 